Mother's Day. Sing it with us this morning. You said if you'd be lifted, you draw all men to you. You said if Sunday service is May 26th. We want to recognize you and your accomplishments. See Pastor Brian for more information. The deadline is May 19th. Reminder that there will be no evening service tonight. Have a great week. We hope to see you Wednesday night for small groups and next Sunday morning here at Mercy. 
Thank you again for joining us at Mercy Church. If you need anything, please see one of our welcome desks in the foyer for assistance. Don't forget to follow us on social media and check out our website for more activities and weekly updates. Good morning. If I get you to stand to your feet. Happy Mother's Day, mothers. So glad to have you here today. I know God is honored because you put him first by coming to his house today. I want you to cross the aisles. If you see anyone you don't recognize, please welcome them to Mercy Church. And I want to personally do so in Jesus' name. Have a blessed day. excited that you're here with us and Mother's Day is a special day for all of us. You may be a mother but all of us have a mother <laughs> so we can all relate and celebrate this day together. As we do each year we like to acknowledge the oldest mother and I have never been one that age mattered to me. Don't ask me other things that are on my driver's license, but I don't mind I don't mind my age because I, one thing I can't help that, and we learn so much in time. Amen? How many of you, I said to somebody the other day, the perfect world would be having the body I had at 21 and the mind I've got now <laughs> because we've learned so much in time. But I, as we do each year, we like to acknowledge the oldest mother, um, there's so many wonderful things the mothers of our church could share. And so I just want to cut right to the chase and say, do we have any mothers among us who are older than 90? 90. 
I know there is one because she's won the last couple of years and she's here this morning. <laughs> Where is Brother, um, Brother Richards? Where is Brother Richards? She is 90? She is 90. Do we have any mothers in here older than 90? If not, everyone, we, we are glad to extend this little gift from Mercy Church to our oldest mom. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Have you to stand up, please. Who said, oh? <laughs> I said, oh, not old. How many of you know it's imperative as born-again believers that you renew your mind with the Word of God? God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him what? And spirit and in truth, and His Word is spirit, amen? So we're going to confess the Word. Y'all ready? Are y'all ready? Repeat this after me. The truth, the spirit of truth, spirit of truth abides, in me, abides in me. And it teaches me, it teaches me all, things, all things. And he guides me, he guides me into, all truth. into all truth. I am, I am a, new a new creation in Christ. In Christ. And, I and I am his workmanship, his workmanship. created in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Therefore, Therefore, I have the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God is formed within me. I have put off the old man and have put on the new man which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created me. Now he has established me in Christ and has anointed me. I am Anointed, anointed in, God, in God who has sealed me, has sealed me and, given me and given me his spirit, his spirit in, my heart in my heart as a deposit. As a deposit. Come on, give God praise. Yes. Come on, I want you to pray with me. Father, we thank you so much for your presence. Father, we honor you this day as we do every day, God. You're the all creator, the all sufficient God of our hearts and our minds and our spirits and everything God and Lord so this day we give you honor in praise in this time and in this place you deserve all the praise God and Father we give you free reign and free rule to do what needs to be done in this place today we give you all praise in Jesus name Amen Lord we love you this morning God our desire is to be close to you is anybody that's your desire this morning? Do you want to know more of him? God, may we never be just satisfied with what we know of you, but help us to always want to grow and know more of you. That is our prayer this morning. I want to be close, close to your side, so heaven is real and death is alive. Great. 
Come on, give it up for the great I am this morning. I'm so excited to spend eternity with him. Amen. God, you are our soon coming king. God, I thank you that we will spend eternity with you in heaven. But here on this earth, we are not alone. I'm so thankful for that. He knows where we are. He's never left us, never forsaken us. God, I thank you that you know the inner depths of our heart, and you love us anyway. You know our past, but more importantly, he has our future in mind. Amen? God, we thank you. We thank you that you, are, you have not left us alone.
Praise God. How many of you know you're not alone today? He's never left you, nor has he ever forsaken you. He said, I'll go with you all the way to the end of the world. Matter of fact, when he got ready to ascend into the heavens, he was standing on the Mount of Olives. There were 500 standing around him, and he gave them instructions to go to Jerusalem and tarry till you be endued with power from on high. He says, go and wait for the comforter, the promise. In other words, there's one coming just like me. He said, it's expedient for you that I go away because if I don't go away, the comforter cannot come. And so when he was leaving, he was letting them know, don't be afraid. He says, there's one that's coming just like me. Basically, you know what he was telling them? He was saying, help is on the way. Don't worry. Don't fear. I'm going to be gone for a while, but there's one just like me is coming. Help is is on the way. Can I tell you this morning, whatever you're going through, can I tell you like this, don't worry, no fear, help is on your way. Jesus is right there with you. His Spirit, the Holy Ghost, is right there with you. We have a comforter. We have help. Hallelujah. I am not alone. Can you say that today? I am not alone. I will fear no evil. Praise God. Hallelujah. Can you give Jesus a great big hand? Amen. You may be seated this morning. I want to say happy Mother's Day. I want to just say to all the ladies in the house, whether you are a mother or not, we love you. Can I tell you that? We love you here at Mercy. Praise God. Men, can we give all the ladies a big hand today? Amen for everything that you do. I want you to be in prayer for my wife. She was here somewhere. She's, she's a little under the weather today, but praise God. How many know we got a team that, hallelujah, it's just like Pastor Fox used to say. Y'all remember what he used to say? No one monkey stops the show. Amen. We keep on going, praise God. Hallelujah. That's why I love being a part of a church that people want to be a part of ministry. Hallelujah. And you got folk under you. Hallelujah. You got people over you. You got people teaching and training. It's like an Elijah, Elisha type thing going on around here. I love it. And that way, church don't stop because sometimes we might have to lay down. But as long as you got an Elisha can walk right behind you and take up your slack amen because we all need some rest and we all get sick from time to time and so i'm thankful for that i'm thankful for this team here praise god i do i'm thankful for it i'm thankful for every teacher every substitute teacher we have praise god i'm just thankful today <laughs> for our church and all of our people praise god at this time if our ushers will prepare themselves we want to go ahead and receive uh, this morning's tithe and offering just want to tell you that I am as the pastor of this church so thankful that you are so faithful in giving of your time your talents your tithe your offering amen that sounded like a three point message didn't it but I do thank you for that uh, you keep this church going and you keep ministries going around this church and we, we just we, I, I thank you and I know that we are blessed here and I know that you are blessed I, I see it in your giving and I know that the Lord has blessed you and he's going to keep on blessing you I want us to go to the Lord in prayer let me just say this I, you're, you're going to enjoy today praise God some of you might not know but Sister Rhonda is going to be bringing the message this morning Amen. She's going to preach. There's no telling what she might do. It's just really, really not. Amen. Also, I'd like to just say uh, on uh, Angie and my uh, behalf, we, just, we thank you for last week, Pastor Appreciation. Thank you for all the gifts, all the cards, uh, letters. 
thank you for the text phone calls we we just listen we're thankful to you and we love you and and i'm appreciative of you and and all that you do for us i i, I thank you from the bottom of my heart i just want to tell you i love you and i and i thank you for that everything Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we love you and we worship you. We magnify your wonderful name. Pray, God, today that the Spirit of God just move in such a powerful way. God, I pray, Father Lord, for the anointing. God, that destroys the yoke that makes the difference. Pray, Father Lord, for the word that's going to go forth, God, the altar call. I pray, God, for all the ladies in the house today. God, I pray for Sister Rhonda as she ministers and preaches your word today. God, I just pray, Father, let this day be a great day, Lord, for everybody in the house. God, we're asking you, Lord, to bless your people as they give. We ask you, Father, that you'd bless what is given. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
and tell him how wonderful he is. He's a good, good father. And he will never leave us or forsake us. And what a comfort that is. Oh, if you've been in a dark place, praise the Lord, that is a comfort. If you've been in a place of indecision or a place of fear and dread, what a joy it is to know that the shepherd is in the valley. <laughs> What a joy it is to know that He will follow you all the days of your life and He is up close and personal. Let's just praise Him. I thank you, Lord, for your presence that we feel. I thank you for the assurance that we have that we are never alone. People may forsake us. Family and friends may go. But, Lord, you will be that one that sticks closer than a brother. We know you as a father. We know you as a friend. We know you as that brother that sticks close. And you will never leave us and you will never forsake us. And we praise you. Have your way in the next few moments. And let this word bring comfort to your people. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say his name, Jesus. Somebody say his name who knows him well, Jesus. I love to begin every message declaring his name. Somebody say Jesus. That one word prayer. That one word prayer that unlocks all of heaven. Somebody say it. Jesus. Somebody who's not ashamed to proclaim him publicly. Say Jesus. Somebody who talks to him in the privacy of your home. Say Jesus. Somebody who talks about him at work, say Jesus. Somebody who talks about him at the bank, say Jesus. Somebody who talks about him in the courthouse, say Jesus. Somebody who talks about him to the neighbors, say Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, the devils of hell tremble at that name that brings us comfort beyond measure. And it's in that name that I come before you this morning and desire to bring you this word. And you may be seated, and I thank God for his presence that we feel. <clears throat> Mother's Day is not an easy day for some. Many of us have, have mothers who have gone on and are in heaven. Some of us may not have had loving and comforting mothers. Some of us may be desiring to be a mother and that hasn't happened yet. Some of us may have had children that have gone ahead of us and that just seems so out of order. And so it's hard sometimes but one thing that the Spirit of the Lord wanted me to do, and I believe this with all of my heart, was to bring a word of comfort for you today. And this message was birthed in my spirit the first part of the year in January um, in a hotel room in Cleveland, Tennessee. <laughs> and the Spirit of the Lord began to draw me back to this when Pastor asked me to preach on Mother's Day. So I want to talk to you this morning about our comforting God there's a verse of scripture in Isaiah 66 and 13 that says, I will comfort you there. Isn't that a wonderful thought? I will comfort you there like a mother comforting her child. And before I go any further into the message, the Lord dropped this in my spirit uh, actually in Sunday school when Sister Kay was teaching and I thought, uh, Joseph is going to shoot me, but I'm going to send him this in a text because I asked him to put it up as an intro to the message because I will comfort you there, there wherever your there is. Somebody say, my there. <laughs> it might be different than your there. <laughs> but he says, I will comfort you there like a mother comforting her child. He's our heavenly father. But how many of you know all good things come from him? And the, the nurturing part of a mother is a gift directly from God that he put in her and it means so much. I, I've had the privilege the last two weekends to be with my two grandsons, Elijah, the first weekend, the weekend before last, and he's not quite six months old. And oh my goodness, just <laughs> he's wonderful. Grandmotherhood is exactly what people warned me it would be like. <laughs> Do all the grandmothers say amen? <laughs> Somebody said it's your reward for not killing your teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then this past weekend, I got to be with little Josiah, Jonathan, and Emily's, and, and he is his, uh, he turned two in March. Well, <clears throat> he had an earache, and I was with him in the hotel room. He spent the night with Kenny and me, and, and we just had the luxury of having him 24-7 for those two little days. And, and sometime in the middle of the night, he was sleeping beside me all curled up, and I just had him pulled up close to me, and it was just such a sweet feeling. But he woke up in the night and he said, Il hurts. Kiss it, Nana. 
Uh, and let me just go ahead and tell you right now, the world ceased, and I had one responsibility, and that was to kiss his ear because it hurt. <laughs> and there was so much comfort that just squeezed out of me, poured into that little two-year-old that I loved dearly, and I kissed his little ear on the side of his face, and he went right to sleep. And he held my finger until daylight. Oh, it was just such a wonderful feeling. And the Spirit of the Lord quickened my heart this morning, sitting right over there in the Sunday school class while Sister Kay was teaching so beautifully. And he said, that is how I feel when I comfort you in your there. I will, com I will comfort you there like a mother comforts her child. Anybody in the room need comforting this morning? Come on, let's just be honest. Anybody hurting about anything in the house this morning? Anybody need God to intervene in a situation that you're facing right now? Anybody in the house besides me need to know that your God is a comforting God? Hallelujah. God is a good God, and He is a comforting Father, and He nurtures you like a mother, and He loves you, and He gently pours in when you're broken. And there's something that the Lord just birthed in my heart this January, and I want to share with you a, a, a version of what God spoke to me. How many moms in the house have baby books at home? <laughs> Come on, tell the truth. <laughs> it was something we did, especially back in, in, the, in the 1900s when, when my boys were little. You, we had baby books, and, and it was sort of like a scrapbook. We would write everything in our books about our babies. We would write their first haircut, their first little step, their first little tooth. And I have those things taped in Joel and Jonathan's baby books right now. And in their baby books, if you flip through their baby books, you would think that they were the best little toddlers that ever walked on this planet because there's not one little tiny word I wrote in there that was negative. Why? Because I wrote all the cute stuff they did, all the first things they did, all the sweet things they did. Every time they melted my heart is written in their baby book. And when you look at that book, you think, oh my goodness, she had perfect sons because not one place in there will you read... Joel had time out today. <laughs> I FaceTimed Josiah night before last, and he said, baby bad in Target. And I said, what baby? And he said, and I said, that baby? He said, I said, did you get a spanking in Target? And he went, time out, baby, jo bye. Time out, baby Josiah. <laughs> I laughed so hard. Emily said it really wasn't funny. I said it really was to me. <laughs> but those are the things that you don't write in the baby book. Amen? So in the baby book, it's just wonderful. Do you know that God has a baby book about you? I want you to look at a passage of Scripture. I'm reading from the message version this morning for most of the Scripture because it gives clarity. And I want to read this to you. I think this is so awesome. God has a personal book about you. Somebody say, God's got a baby book about me. Put your hand right here and say it to yourself. God has a baby book about me. That is awesome. The God of the universe is up close and personal in your life. You may not have had a mother that took the time, but God does. Your mother may have been busy and overwhelmed and did the best she could, but God is up close and personal. He has a personal book about you, Malachi 3, 16 through 18. I want us to look at those verses together. Malachi 3, 16 through 18. Then those whose lives honored God got together and talked it over. Now, <laughs> how many of you love to see certain people coming your way? Come on, how many of you love to see certain people? Hey, and you know that within 30 seconds you're going to be talking about, amen. Those are the kind of people that light up the room when they come in. And they, they come in and they bring joy and the conversation always goes to him. And look at this. Then those whose lives honored God got together and talked it over. I think that's wonderful. God saw what they were doing and listened in. What? <laughs> Y'all, God listened in. Have you ever walked up on somebody and they were talking about you? And it was good? So you, you did like that. You walk and talk and somebody's with you and you go, shh, shh, shh. Because you, you come, no, y'all don't look at me so holy. You want to hear when somebody's talking about you and it's good. You want to hear what they're saying. Uh-huh, you do. And it says that God saw it and he saw what they were doing and listened in. And a book was opened in God's presence. And minutes were taken of the meeting. 
What? God took minutes of the meeting of your conversation about him. Isn't that wonderful? And it says, with the names of the God-fearers, Somebody say, I'm a God-fearer. How many of you are a God-fearer? You follow God and you reverence him and you love him and you know that there is none beside him. Hallelujah. He is the real thing. Hallelujah. And the God-fearers, their names were written down. All the names of those who honored God. Oh, look at verse 17. Hallelujah. This is awesome. God of the angel armies. Can't you just see your God standing there, the God of the angel armies? God of the angel armies said, they're mine. Oh, mine. Oh, come on, somebody help me out here. They're mine. All mine. He looks at Jim Buffner and he says, Jimbo, you're mine, son. You're mine. You're all mine. Now, I don't know if that does anything to the inside of you or not, but when the devil comes nigh your dwelling and Jehovah God stands up and points in your direction and says, Elvira, she's mine, all mine. The devils of hell tremble. Anybody in here listening to what the word is saying to you this morning? Oh, it says they're mine. They're all mine. Listen to what the word says. They'll get special treatment when I go into action. Oh, come on, somebody, help me out here. If either one of my grown sons walked through that back door right now and they had fear or concern or distress on their face and they busted through that door and said, Mama, you know what would happen? I would drop this microphone, I would forget everybody in the room, and I would run towards those back doors to see what was going. Oh, come on, help me out. How many of you know you'd do the same thing? And he says, they'll get special treatment when I go into action. He's talking about you, Lauren, when I, I will give them special treatment. I treat them with the same consideration and kindness that parents give the child who honors them. Somebody take a minute and raise your hand and praise God. That book of remembrance that's written about you, Deborah, he says she's mine. She's a God-fearer. She talks about me. I record her conversation and oh, when she needs me, I'm the God of the angel armies and I go into action on her behalf Psalm 139 2 through 6 this is us declaring and God listening I'm an open book to you even from a distance you know what I'm thinking <laughs> oh come on even from a distance you know you know when I leave and when I get back oh praise God see I wrote down my boys first steps but I could not tell you every moment what they were doing and what they were thinking but God is so up close and personal in his book of remembrance about you he says I'm never out of your sight you know everything I'm going to say before I start the first sentence what? I have my boy's first words recorded, but the Lord knows every word we're going to say before we even start the sentence. Wow. He's busy running the whole universe, but he's right there where you are, up close and personal. I look behind me and you're there. Then up ahead and you're there too. Your reassuring presence coming and going. I am not alone. Somebody raise your hand and say, I am not alone. This is too much, too wonderful. I can't take it all in. Is anybody in the house this morning feeling what the Spirit of the Lord is wanting you to hear? He's here to comfort you with his awareness of you every moment of the day. Oh, listen to this. He, he kept track of your sleepless nights and even your tears are recorded. He's got a personal book about you and he's kept track of your sleepless nights. Has any, uh, let, let's just, it's just us. Has anybody had an anxious moment? Has anybody dealt with be anxious for nothing, but has anybody had any anxiety creep in? Has anybody had a circumstance or a situation that blindsided you? Do you know that God is mindful he's kept track of your sleepless nights and even recorded your tears look at psalm 56 and 8 this is scripture this is not my hoping this is scripture this is validated in the word you've kept track of my every toss and turn through the sleepless nights I, somebody, I, I need to just oh, slow down for just a second 
and let that sink in because I, I'm, I'm feeling that right now. Somebody's needing to hear this. You've kept track of my every toss and turn through the sleepless nights. Each tear you entered in your ledger. Each ache written in your book about me. I need for somebody just just somebody just pause. Can somebody just pause right now and thank him because he's up close and personal. Come on, somebody who's somebody who's needed to know that he's numbered your every tear and that he's bottled them and he's kept record, he's kept a ledger. And for every sorrow, he will bless you doubly. He's keeping a record because he will reward you openly for your sorrow and for your faithfulness when you've been in the valley. Come on, somebody, raise your hand and praise God and declare with me, I will be faithful. Come on, say it out loud. I will be faithful in my valley. Come on, raise your hand. I will worship you in my dark place. Oh, God, I will reverence you even when life doesn't make sense. I will cling to your hand. And he is saying, I've kept track of it. I've kept record of it. I know it. Your very hairs are numbered and inventoried. Matthew 10 and 30. He pays even greater attention to you down to the last detail, even numbering the hairs on your head. I know the ladies have heard me say this. He even knows what color it's going to be next month. <laughs> He knows when he finds one of your hair, he knows the DNA belongs to you, and he knows the color Miss Claire all labeled it. <laughs> he knows all about it. He knows the day you were born. He knows everything. And to inventory the hair of your head is an up-close and personal God. In my boys' baby books, they have their little first haircut taped in, but I couldn't tell you today how many hair are growing on their head. Are you hearing me? But God is so mindful of you. Not only does he number the hair of your head, not only does he bottle your tears, not only does he record your tossing and turning and know every ache, but he's ordered your steps and planned your future, and his plans are better than your dreams. Come on, somebody, praise him. Somebody praise him. His plans are better than your dreams. We all know and love Jeremiah 29 and 11, but let's read it again together. I know this is God talking. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Somebody, have you ever wondered when life hits you hard, what's going on, when your plans change, you thought you had the next four years all figured out, you thought you had the next agenda down pat, and God says, uh-uh, I have something better for you than what you yet have anticipated. Trust me, walk with me through it. His plans are better than your dreams. Look, I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Somebody breathe deep, take a deep breath, and let it out and raise your hand and say praise God you've got it all planned out come on somebody tell him thank you Lord for taking the time to plan out my destiny and my future <laughs> the world is crazy but God's got a plan for his babies remember we read in the beginning oh you are favored by God he said I will show you special treatment oh come on somebody raise your hand and bless the Lord because favor isn't fair but it's yours you've got the favor of God on you right now today <laughs> he says I've got it all planned out plans to do what take care of you not abandon you somebody say it again I'm not alone plans to give you the future you hope for come on somebody <laughs> how many of you have had your hopes cruelly dashed but God says mm -mm, I've got a plan I've got a plan I've got a plan and I'm bigger than any plot the enemy brings against you. I've got a plan. I've got a plan. And I can work the impossible and I can bring it to fruition. I've got a plan. And I've got your name written all over it. Praise God. I, I love this Revelation 5 and 8 part B. It says that the, in, the prayers of the saints are sweet incense 
There's a golden bowl filled with incense, and they're the prayers of God's holy people. God has kept your prayers, and he knows your heart's cry. God's kept your prayers, and he knows your heart's cry. I want you just to pause and think about that for a second. I have in Joel's baby book, when he was four and a half years old, he asked me, he came up to me, and he said, Mama, I want you to pray with me because I want God to turn my sins away and give me a clean heart. How many of you know I stopped what I was doing that moment? I don't know if it was a Sunday school teacher, a VBS teacher. I don't know if it was the pastor. I don't know if it was something I said or a song we sung, but something resonated in his little heart. And I have that prayer written in his baby book. And when I thought about that, the Lord quickened my spirit and said, don't you know that I value and treasure every prayer that's ever been uttered from the mouth of my children? Somebody raise your hand and praise the Lord. He's recorded your prayers and they are like sweet incense before the throne of God prayer is giving God back dominion what are you talking about I've talked about this many times before in, the, in our church Genesis 127 and 28 says God created man in his own image in the image of God he created him male and female he created them and then look at verse 28 then God blessed them and God said to them be fruitful and multiply fill the earth and subdue it have dominion over it the, over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air over every living thing that moves on the earth God gave man dominion in the garden and the reason we pray is giving him back that dominion and authority to move on our behalf. That is why the enemy came against Adam and Eve in the garden because he wanted to take the authority and the dominion they had been given. And when fallen man fell into sin, then all of a sudden now fallen man and the enemy had access and dominion over the planet. And when I pray, I'm giving God access back over my situation. When I don't pray, I'm saying, that's okay, God, I've got this. Prayer is giving God back dominion. And prayer is so powerful. God keeps the prayers of the saints. I know this on a personal level. I ask you to forgive me. I know I've told this story a hundred times. And I know I've told it here. But for those who have not heard it, I'm going to tell it again. <laughs> I'm just going to tell it again. I'll never forget the moment that it happened standing in our living room. And some of you could quote this with me. You've heard me tell it so many times because it impacted my life now and for eternity. Our oldest son, Joel, was straddling the fence. Anybody had a fence straddler in the house? Anybody know how miserable it makes you and them and everybody in the proximity of the fence straddler? <laughs> and the fence straddler was in the house, and Joel, Joel was just a teenager. It was 2002. I remember it. He said, Mom, he said, I, 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 don't, I don't understand. He said, he said I, I'm miserable. And, and that night, and I knew why he was not living right. He was trying to find his place in the world. He was going back and forth. He couldn't find, he couldn't, nothing made sense. And, and, and I remember walking in the living room of the house. And, and I remember standing over by the dining room table. And it was the middle of the night. And, and it was quiet. Everybody was asleep. And I simply went over and the Spirit of the Lord quickened my heart, Crystal. And he said, pray this prayer. Pray that every prayer that's ever been prayed on behalf of Joel be heard again. I stopped, and he said, don't you know that the prayers of the saints are like sweet incense? And he reminded me of that scripture. He said, don't you realize that prayer is giving me back dominion, and it is a memorial in heaven that I have been given legal authority. Kay touched on that this morning, the legal authority, and God honors his word, and he, he has given us this in the principles of the word of God so that we can live according to it. God will not cross his word, not even for himself. He will not break his word, and he gave man dominion and he said when you pray it is my recorded covenant between God and man it is a memorial before heaven that you have given me access over your family over your situation and I have legal rights to your bloodline somebody somebody needs to hear what I'm saying in here and so I said God in the name of Jesus I stand here and I was talking no louder than this and I didn't have a mic God in the name of Jesus 
every prayer that's ever been prayed on behalf of Joel hear those prayers again hear those prayers again and be moved by them God remind heaven and earth that you have access to my family remind heaven and earth that you've been given dominion over my household over my lineage God in the name of Jesus and I was praying that and as I was praying it Joel got up in the middle of the night to go get water in the kitchen and when he passed through the room I was standing in his feet touched the hardwood floor it sounded like a tree falling in the room I looked back behind me and he was laying on the floor in the living room and he cried out these words and he will vouch what I'm saying to you he was saying mama what's happening to me I walked over to him tears were dripping down the side of his face onto the floor he said mama what's happening to me and I looked at him Molly and I said Joel the prayers of the saints that have been prayed on your behalf are being heard right now in heaven and I'm praying in agreement with them and the devil will not have my seed the enemy will not have my children or my children's children somebody in here raise your hand and declare that with me the enemy will not have my seed or my children my children's children for as many as the Lord will allow me to have until he comes again so why am I saying this I'm saying your prayers are recorded in heaven and when you step into agreement oh come on somebody your mama might be in heaven mine is but her prayers are still valid oh, oh somebody somebody Nana's Nani's prayers are still valid mama's prayers are still valid when I pray in agreement I'm saying God every prayer my mother ever prayed hear those prayers again and be moved by them every prayer my grandmother ever prayed hear those prayers I'm stepping into agreement with them Pastor Murphy's prayed in agreement with his granddaddy more times than I can count he's prayed in agreement stepping over in the name of Jesus we align ourselves with the prayers of those who have gone somebody raise your hand right now and say God I align my prayers with the prayers of those who have gone before me my daddy's prayers my mama's prayers and you may say I don't have a lineage like that well you can start one today in the name of Jesus you can be that diamond in the solitaire for your family you can be that one who breaks through and says my family God will have dominion and authority over mine <laughs> somebody raise your hand and praise God your prayers are recorded in God's baby book about you and he values them <laughs> in the hotel room back in January I happened to see this because we travel so much and we have triple A because we do and, and I looked online I had looked for something earlier and this just jumped out at me triple A's their slogan it says peace of mind when things on the road don't go as planned <laughs> peace of mind when things on the road don't go as planned anybody ever had things on the road not go as planned literally and spiritually how many of you spiritually have had things on the road come on I, I know somebody else needs to be preaching if I'm the only one <laughs> raise your hand and help a sister out how many of you have had things spiritually go wrong in this path we're traveling called life <laughs> peace of mind when things oh God's so up close and personal he's written a book about you sister Brenda God's so up close and personal he's recorded your hair bottled your tears he knows you're tossing and you're turning your words before you speak them every prayer you've ever been prayed is recorded oh come on he's up close and personal and you've got triple A when you travel what, what are you talking about Rhonda when I was in the hotel room that night I jotted this down oh I have access come on somebody say access we have permission, liberty to enter and approach past to and from the, thr uh, the throne of God I'm getting excited whether you are or not we have access, somebody raise your hand and say praise the Lord when he died on the cross he cried out it is finished and the veil was torn in two from the top to the bottom and now we have access we can come and go and make our petitions known somebody raise your hand and praise God and say thank you for the access I have been given <laughs> not only do you have access you have 
You have ministering spirits. You have angels. Somebody say angels. I have access. I have angels. Hebrews 1 and 14 calls a ministering spirit sent to serve. Ministering spirit sent to serve us. Ministering spirit sent to serve the heirs of salvation. We don't worship them, but they serve us. I just read from Christian News, and I read it in two different sources, that there were some people taken captivity in, 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 a, in a part of Africa where the Muslim are, are taken over and killing and massacring Christians and they took 76 into captivity and they took it was men women and children and they took the they took four of the men of the different households and they said we're going to slaughter you in front of your wives and children and the other men that we've taken captive if you don't deny Christ the four men refused and just as they promised they slaughtered them and killed them and and I, like I said I've read this I've validated it I've searched it out and it's an awesome article and, and they said during the night, the wives and the mothers and the men that were left prayed and sought God. And, and the, the, they had told the women, they said, in the morning, we're going to kill your children if you don't deny Christ. And the mothers were wailing and agonizing and crying out because I don't even have to explain. And, and, and the next morning, one of the little children had a vision of Jesus standing in front of him. And he said, Jesus looked at me and said, don't be afraid. Everything's going to be all right. <laughs> so that little child went to the other mothers and said, don't be afraid. Everything's going to be all right. Well, just as they promised, these radical Muslims took these kids, lined them up, and they were about to gun them down with machine guns. And they told the mothers to deny Christ. And the mothers, weeping and crying, said, we cannot, we will not. And just as they were about to shoot, <laughs> the, the soldiers started screaming out, Snakes! 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 <laughs> snakes! <laughs> Venomous, poisonous snakes had been released from somewhere, and they assaulted only the soldiers with the weapons. And the men, some of them, they said, died from sheer fear. Some of them died from venomous snakes. All of them dropped their guns and ran. And the little boy went over to grab one of the guns, and the other little child said, There's no need to pick up a gun. Look at all these men in white with weapons around us. They're fighting for us. Somebody raise your hand and praise God. We have ministering spirits who are sent. Oh, I need somebody to get excited because there are warring angels encamped around you right now. You might not see that on CNN. You might not see it on Fox News. But I'm telling you, the word is getting out. God's doing the supernatural on behalf of his people. Somebody raise your hand. Favor ain't fair. God's got a book about you. And he said, I will go into action. They are mine. They're mine. They're mine, all mine, says God in his word. I have access. I have angels. Psalm 91 says they're assigned to protect us. Psalm 34 and 7 says they encamp all around us. If they're camping all around us, that means they're traveling with us. Somebody, again, just stop and thank Jesus. I have access. I have angels. And I have agreement. I have agreement. I can enter into agreement with all the prayers that have ever been. Oh, somebody, right now, I do this everywhere I go. I did it in Colorado. I did it in California. And I'm telling you, God's doing something in our nation. Don't you be discouraged. Don't you be despondent. God's got a people, and they're rising up. And God is saying, I'm hearing your petitions. Oh, we, we prayed in agreement with every prayer that had ever been prayed over the state of Colorado. We prayed in agreement with every prayer that had ever been prayed over the state of California. And I want us to do it again. I know we've done it before, but stop right now. And let's say in the name of Jesus, I pray in agreement with every prayer that's ever been prayed over the state of South Carolina. God, hear those prayers and be moved by them. God, let our governor, our city officials, our county officials hear the voice of God and be moved by him. God, give our leaders a Damascus Road experience. God, send revival. Somebody right now pray in agreement with every prayer that's ever been prayed on behalf of our nation. Come on, somebody. I need somebody who loves America right now pray in agreement with the first pilgrim that landed on the shore God in the name of Jesus I pray right now with every prayer that's ever been prayed we enter into agreement on behalf of this nation send a great awakening send a revival when things don't go as planned I have triple A I have angels I have access 
I have agreement. I want to leave you with this thought. When the storms come, the natural thing to do is focus on the storm, right? When the winds start blowing, the natural thing to do is look at the wind. When the rains come, the natural things to do is to look. When the thunder starts, come on, anybody in here know what I'm talking about? When you get a bad report, the, the, the logical thing and the natural mind to do is to go where the bad report sends you. And I remember this, and, and it's Mother's Day. So I'm, I'm talking about my kids. And I remember when Jonathan was, he was about three, and, and I was busy, and I was doing multitask. Mamas do that. And he, he climbed up on the counter to try to get my attention. I was wiping off the counter in the kitchen, and, and he said, Mama, I tell you something. I tell you something. And I said, Jonathan, Mama's listening, baby. I'm listening. And he said, No, Mama, listen. And I said, Baby, Mama's listening. And he stopped me, climbed up on the counter, and got my face like this. <laughs> and he said, Listen with your eyes, Mama. Listen with your eyes. So guess what I did? I stopped what I was doing and gave him my undivided attention. I listened with my eyes. Calorie wasn't long after that I went through a rough spot. Many of you know what I'm talking about. And the Spirit of the Lord quickened my heart and he said, Rhonda, listen with your eyes. What was he saying? He was saying, don't you know how much I love you? Don't you know I've written a book about you? I have a book of remembrance just about you, Kathy. I've recorded your down sitting, your uprising, your tears. I've bottled them. I know every struggle. I know every victory. I know every joy. But you need to listen with your eyes, James. Don't look at the situation. Look at me. Focus on me. Pay close attention to me. Look into my face. How many of you remember the, the words to that song? O oh soul, are you wearied and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth, the trials, the troubles, the sorrow, the fear, the anxiety will grow strangely dim. Somebody raise your hand. In the light of his glory and grace, his word shall not fail you, he promised. <laughs> oh, come on, somebody. Just That's praiseworthy right there. His word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all will be well. <laughs> then go to a world that is dying. His perfect salvation to tell. Will you stand? I will comfort you there like a mother comforting her child. Can you put that verse back up for me, Joseph, please? I will comfort you there like a mother comforting her child. What is your there? What is it that you have need of? The love of God is so rich. He's saying, I've got a book about you, a book of remembrance. Listen with your eyes. Don't look at the circumstances. Look at the God who is greater than every situation you'll ever face. I know it's Mother's Day, but I just want to take time and ask you this question. Do you need the comfort of God in your there? Do you need Him right now in a situation that you're facing? If you do, just come and let's just take a minute and pray in agreement with you. The altars are open and you're welcome. Please don't hesitate. If the, if the Lord is dealing with you and, and you just have a situation that's pressing... If you just have a situation that you just need for the Lord to whisper in your ear, He's mine. She's mine. He's mine. She's mine. The God of the angel army says, They're mine, all mine. 
they'll get special treatment when I go into action. I treat them with the same consideration and kindness that parents give the child who honors them. I will comfort them like a good mother and they're there. And they're there. God, in the name of Jesus, you see these who are coming. And you know what they're facing. You know the heaviness of their heart. You know the battle that is surrounding them. And God, I'm asking you right now, give them the strength to listen with their eyes, to look full in your glorious face. And the things that they're facing will grow strangely dim in the light of your presence. God, I'm asking you to have your way right now with every man, every woman, every young person, everybody that has walked to the front of this sanctuary. Have your way. I want you to stretch your hands in the direction of these who have come. And I want you with me to say, God, in the name of Jesus, every prayer that's ever been prayed on behalf of these who have come, hear those prayers again and be moved by them. In the name of Jesus, every prayer that's ever been prayed, hear those prayers again and be moved by them. Now I want you just to take some time and, and praise him because he loves you and he's going to comfort you wherever you are. He's got a book of remembrance written about you. Go ahead, just praise him. And I want us to pray. I, I want some to come help me pray with these who have come. God, in the name of Jesus, have your way. I feel your sweet presence, Lord. I feel your sweet presence. I feel the, a sweet presence of God in this place this morning. His presence can never be restricted. We see Him move in different ways. Sometimes we run in a Pentecostal church. Sometimes we cry. Sometimes we shout. Sometimes we kneel quietly. Sometimes we're silent and sometimes we're loud. But I feel a sweet presence of the Lord in this place today. A comforting presence of the Lord. I will comfort you there like a mother comforting her child. I feel the comforting presence of the Holy Spirit. Go ahead and let him open your heart up. Go ahead and open your heart to the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Go ahead and open your heart. God's doing something and I don't want to rush him. Go ahead and open your heart. Go ahead and open your heart. Help me pray, prayer warriors. Help me pray.
God, how many of you know that God loves you? Do you really know that? That He loves you, that He cares for you? Every hair on your head, He knows you by name, every tear that you've ever shed. I mean, God loves you, and you're not alone. He's concerned about everything that affects you today. And if God be for you, the Bible says, who can be against you? No that today when you walk out of this building that Jesus loves you he cares for you he's here for you and he's going to lead you and guide you every step of the way did you enjoy this this morning Sister Rhonda <laughs> Amen praise God no service tonight go and enjoy your mother enjoy being with your family just uh, take this time of rest and uh, next Sunday uh, we're going to do it again, and we're going to have a powerful service. We want you to be here Wednesday, have a lot going on on Wednesday nights. Get involved, get joined up with a group, and uh, just let the Lord bless you. Will you stand with me? Father, Lord, I love you, and I thank you, God, for your word today. Thank you, God, that you love us, that you care for us. Magnify your wonderful holy name, God. We are not alone. You are right there every step of the way, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you've done today in the hearts and the lives of your people. And I pray God bless all the ladies today as they go, Lord. Be with them in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you as you go. Shake somebody's hand. Hug their neck.